Hi everyone, Tina Christudia Spiru here, Neomed's functional medicine practitioner and nutritionist. Today, we're going to continue our hormone talk and do the second part of our three-part series. Today's focus will be on the thyroid, a topic that's very near and dear to my heart as I too have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune condition that attacks the thyroid. But in this context, we want to talk about how the thyroid hormone or the dysfunctioning of thyroid hormones affect the rest of our sex hormones, our progesterone, our estrogen, and our testosterone. So basically, we need enough thyroid hormone to have enough of all of these. Okay, so if, it, if it's not functioning properly, or if your thyroid is not functioning properly, you're not going to get the right amount of hormones that you need to, for a woman to get their periods and for a man to, have, to build muscle and have a good libido. Okay, so all of these things become important, important when you're looking at thyroid health. Now, 95% of all thyroid problems are autoimmune in nature. In other words, a lot of the time it's an autoimmune issue going on. The, bo the body is attacking the thyroid gland. Either we have Graves disease, which is hyperthyroidism, or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which ends up in hypothyroidism, or sometimes a mixture of both. And it's basically about balancing the immune system so that a lot of these issues can decrease. But in the context of hormones, a lot of the time the, the thyroid can dysfunction because our, of stress, because our adrenal glands are not producing the right amounts of cortisol at the right moments in time. And so it's very important to kind of look at whenever you have a thyroid patient or if you have a thyroid problem, it's very important to look at the relationship between our cortisol levels and our adrenal function as well as thyroid function and autoimmune issues. Now, in order to get the thyroid back into balance, when we're speaking specifically of the thyroid, like I said, first we look at our cortisol issues and our adrenal issues. And the second thing is to look at our autoimmunity issues. And that's when a lot of other things come into play, especially when you're looking at it from a point of functional medicine. We're looking for the root cause. So is the root cause in the gut? Do you have a leaky gut? Most likely, because if you have autoimmunity, you probably have a gut that is inflamed and allowing things to enter into the bloodstream that is not recognized by the body, further stimulating the immune system to overshoot and attack the body. Okay, so that's one thing to address. Always start with the gut. Always start with your gut health. Do you have overgrowths? Do you have things like parasitic overgrowths or bacterial overgrowths or fungal overgrowths? All these things need to be addressed so that the autoimmunity factor of thyroid dysfunction kind of starts to calm down. Another factor, heavy metals like mercury, if you have amalgam fillings in your teeth, you know, all this toxicity and your total toxic burden has a lot of uh, stress on the thyroid hormone production. Um, having said that as well, looking to the liver, your storage form of thyroid hormone turns into the active form in the liver. So if your liver is sluggish and not functioning properly, you're not going to get a lot of active thyroid hormone kind of um, going around and doing its work in the cells. Another thing that's really interesting to look at is how cortisol plays a function on how thyroid hormone is received in the cells. If you have too much stress going on, your cells do not accept the active form of thyroid hormone. You actually can get thyroid hormone resistance. Okay, and I think this is another mechanism in which the body is like, okay, we're in emer emergency mode, there's a lot of stress going on, please stop thyroid hormone production so we have less metabolism. Okay, and so very important, like I said before, to look at your cortisol pattern in conjunction with your thyroid hormone levels. Like I said in the previous video, how do we check cortisol levels? We do it in a six point saliva, saliva test where you spit into a little tube um, at six points throughout the day to check out your curve and how your cortisol levels are doing throughout the day. How do we check our thyroid hormone levels? A lot of specialists, when they look at thyroid hormone function, they'll only check TSH, which is the thyroid stimulating hormone, and our free T4, which is how much storage form of thyroid hormone we have. But in actuality, to get a, a better picture of what's going on, we need to be testing TSH, free T4, free T3, sometimes reverse T3, 
antibodies like anti-TPO and anti-TG. Because like I said, 95% 95 of, 95 of all thyroid problems are usually autoimmune in nature. So very important to check out those antibodies. Okay. Um, a lot of the time too, you have to think about a lot of ranges are given in the lab work and saying this is within normal range. But from speaking from a point of view of functional medicine, we're looking at optimal range. We want to see functioning range. We don't want to wait for disease, right? We want to see optimal. So where you would like to see these hormones, like if you look at free T4 and free T3, you want to see it in the upper third of normal. Like if you look at that range, you want to see it in the upper third. That's your optimal functioning range. For TSH, the optimal functioning range is between 1 and 2.5, and many would argue even between 1 and 2. All right, so if you're getting ranges back of TSH like 3, 3.5, 4, there's definitely a sluggish thyroid problem going on, and we need to do some detective work to figure out what's going on with your thyroid. Now, in relation to how thyroid affects the sex hormones, thyroid hormones are needed to produce our sex hormones. Yeah, especially it has a very intricate relationship with progesterone. Progesterone, as the word says, is progestation. It, your body's getting ready to um, conceive a baby every month, right? And so if, we're, if we don't produce enough thyroid hormone, a lot of time what we see is very short cycles or sometimes very long cycles. We can see a lot of heavy bleeding going on and we can actually see people not being able to sleep at night because progesterone also helps with a woman being able to sleep properly in the evening. And so it becomes very important before we kind of delve into just supplementing with hormones like progesterone and estrogen and things like this, to actually look at if the thyroid is functioning optimally. Most of the time for my patients, I've noticed that if I kind of fix the optimal functioning of the thyroid hormone, we will get more, uh, we will get better results when it comes to getting our periods every month and also not bleeding as much. This has been the second part of our three part hormone series. If you'd like to find out more about how your thyroid affects your hormones, or in general, if you have a thyroid problem and you'd like to get answers to how to get better, please contact us here at Neomed and we're happy to help. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.